Hi, everybody. Welcome to our channel. Rebecca Stu and the crew. I'm so happy to have you guys here today. I'm really excited to show you guys what I made this week. We're going to make the stacked pumpkin sign. It stands over three and a half feet tall and this farmhouse milk can. So let's go over the supplies for part one. So if you want, you can pause and just write them down or we'll go over them now. So I'm going to use a leftover sign that I had, but Dollar Tree sells these uh, mason jar signs. You need one of those. We'll need one sheet of this craft foam, a paint marker, a paint brush, a foam brush, a craft stick, some permanent markers, some colored pencils, and a pencil. You're also going to need some white paint and one of these wood um, stickers from Dollar Tree. From the craft store, we're going to use the antiquing wax from Waverly, some of their clear wax, and then we're also going to use some farmhouse clip art from the internet. So let's get crafty. So for the milk can, which is where we're going to start, I'm going to take this old mason jar sign I had from an old craft that I had already done, and I'm going to paint the back of it with the acrylic white paint. So it didn't really cover all that well. So I ended up taking um, some chalk paint for the second coat here. But for the first coat, it does a nice job as like a primer to cover that. And then um, once that was dry, I did the chalk paint. Now, if you want, you can use the acrylic paint you might need three coats instead of two to cover it, but you do want to wait a little bit longer between coats just to make sure that the sign doesn't start to warp on you from the moisture. So once I have that covered with the chalk paint, I just started at the top and worked my way down and just smoothed out any ridges. Now taking a piece of this craft foam, just turned it sideways and I'm cutting two pieces that are about a half an inch wide. Then I painted the front side with the white chalk paint. I waited for that to dry, flipped them over, and I did paint the other side because we will be able to see both sides of this. So now taking some clip art from the internet, I literally just Googled fall farmhouse clip art and I took a bunch of different pictures that I liked, printed them out, and then cut them apart and put them together to what I liked for my design. So then I traced over those with a pencil. And once that's done, you just wanna cut those apart and flip it over on top of your sign. And once you have those where you want, if you like, you can tape it down a little bit with some um, painter's tape. It's not necessary, just helps keep it from moving all over. And you wanna take your craft stick and you just wanna rub over top of the papers that you traced with your pencil. So once that's done, just take that paper off. And as you can see, it leaves the marks behind for the picture that you can trace as your stencil. So then I went over the outlines here with the Sharpie marker. You can use a paint marker. You don't have to use the black. You can use the color that you're going to color the pumpkins. Um, you don't, like I said, you don't have to start with black. Since I wanted a black outline on mine, I just used black and then I colored in the lettering. So now taking a pencil, I just start at the top of that mason jar lid and I did like an angled line and then just met it to the top of the jar. And this is going to give the top of that jar more of a milk can look. And then taking that paint marker, I just trace around the whole entire outline of this can with that paint marker. You do want to be careful though that you don't drag your hand through the paint marker. It does take a second for it to dry and you don't want to smear that on your sign that you just painted. So now taking either some scissors or you can use a utility knife. It's really not necessary, at least I didn't think so. You just wanna cut off that excess top part that was the mason jar lid. And then um, once that was done, I just took my permanent markers and I started to color in my pumpkins. So I went around the inside of those outlines with the permanent marker and then I just used the colored pencils or just Crayola pencils. Um, and I started covering, coloring a lot heavier towards the top and the bottom, so it was darker. And as I got towards the center, I did it a lot lighter, so it was more of a highlight. I colored the stems brown, and then for the blue pumpkin, I did the leaf and the vine green. I just colored the top part of that leaf a little bit darker and left the bottom part lighter, so it was a highlight, and then went over the vine. So for the brown pumpkin here, I outlined that in that um, brown Sharpie marker. I used the brown colored pencil and then I wanted the middle of this pumpkin to have more of a fall color like an orangish yellow so I did that in the middle and then I did go over it with a white pencil just to add some highlight then for the leaf and the vine on this one I went ahead and added um, orange to that for the green pumpkin I traced that with a green marker and then just did the green pencils on the top and bottom and again left it lighter in the center and then the vine and the leaf for that one I left blue 
So that is it for that. And we are going to seal that with some of the clear wax. But I just love how this turns out. And it really helps if you don't have a Cricut or a Silhouette. So now taking that little leaf that we're going to use, I outlined that with the orange permanent marker, colored it in with the pencil. You can leave it that, really make it any color you like. I decided to um, add a little bit of brown to mine. I didn't want it so bright of an orange. And then I just kind of blended those colors all together with the orange marker again, and then added the veins with the white colored pencil. So now that those little handles are dry, we are going to just trace the outline around the front and the back and the edges with that black paint marker. You do need to do the black paint marker on both sides of this because you're going to see it. So then I just used some hot glue to attach it where I thought the handles would be on this milk can on either side. And once I had the front done, all you want to do is flip it over really, but I just want to show you guys here. You just bend it around to the back and then you want to glue that into place on either side and that gives it more of a 3D look. Then once those were glued down, I took my paint marker and put two little dots on either side to look like that's how it was attached to the can. Then I glued that little leaf to the center of the Farm Fresh. So we're almost done here with the can. I did want to give it a like rusty farmhouse look, you know, but just a little bit. I don't want to overdo it. So instead of like using sandpaper, I used that antiquing wax by Waverly and I just watered it down a lot so I could very lightly brush it onto the top a little bit on the handles where I thought the rust would begin to show. And then when I did the rust around the sides of the can, I made sure I did it more of an arc so that it made the edges look more round. If you just go straight across, it's going to look very flat and this helps give it more of a 3D look. So then taking that clear wax, I just went over the whole entire top of it. It helps to seal in the colored pencils and Sharpies and um, paint markers, and it helps smooth out those lines of the antiquing wax so that it just really blends in and looks like rust and not paint. And that is the whole milk can finished. And now we'll do part two. So here are the supplies for this. If you want to pause here, you can, but we're going to use one of these large uh, small and medium sized pumpkins from the Dollar Tree. We're going to use three of the large ovals, three small ovals also from Dollar Tree, some different colors of raffia. We're going to use some twine. And then for the flowers, I picked up these at the Dollar Tree as well as these leaves here. I also have some sunflowers. I have some different greenery and things that I've picked up couple times that I've been there. I did have a couple different ones from the craft store, but really I just want to use different ones that coordinate. I'm going to use some of this bamboo wreath, some fix all adhesive, Mod Podge, and a sponge brush to seal it all, some hot glue. And then from the craft store, I'm going to use the scrapbooking paper with the folk art patina chalk paint. I'm also going to use this green scrapbook paper with the Waverly mineral chalk paint. And then for the burlap scrapbook paper, I'm going to do the folk art sheepskin paint. You're also going to need either some really large paint sticks, a dowel rod, or a piece of wood that measures three feet long and three inches wide. So let's make the pumpkin tower. So the first thing we're going to do is take everything off of this pumpkin stand. Um, to get it off of the stand, you just wanna pop a screwdriver underneath of it and then pry it up out of the stand. And then I took off, of course, the bow, the burlap, and I took off that little flower. So once that was done, I just put that aside. And then this one, I took off the raffia and the little um, leaf. I did keep those things because I can use them for another craft. And then the 3D pumpkin here, I took off that raffia bow. And then I took my screwdriver and I started very carefully, slowly prying these 3D pieces off of the pumpkin. I want to do those some different colors and it's just easier to do it this way. You have to work very slow and take your time or you will ruin your pumpkin. So um, really, if you cut around the edges with a razor blade a little bit, it really helps to lift these off. It's okay if some of the little wood comes off because we're going to paint over it. So I did paint all of the backs of these black. I like the back of my projects to look finished. So I did end up painting the back of that mason jar can black as well. So once those were drying, I just started to paint my ovals and I did the large ones in the blue, the 3D pumpkin I painted with the mineral paint and then the small ovals I did in the sheepskin colored paint. 
and I did around the edges and then just the one side. So then I set those aside to dry. And then I took the scrapbook paper and I just traced those pumpkins on top of those and then cut them out. So the large pumpkin is going to be the blue scrapbook paper with those large blue ovals. I took some spray adhesive. You can use Mod Podge. Either one will work. And then I just flipped that paper over and attach it to the pumpkin. I ended up painting the top of that stem as well, but you didn't need to because you ended up not being able to see it. So then for the DIY pumpkin, that 3D pumpkin, I did that with the green paper and the mineral craft paint. And then the smaller pumpkin I did with the burlap scrapbook paper. Again, just attaching that with that spray adhesive from the Dollar Tree. But you can use Mod Podge. Either one will work, like I said. So while those were drying, I did paint the stem to that um, with the mineral paint. Once those were dry, I just attached these circles. So using hot glue, you want to um, do both ovals side by side. This is the bottom layer. And then for the top layer, for the 3D look, you just glue that right to the center. I just love how this looks. If you can't find those DIY 3D pumpkins, you just can make your own. It's really easy to do. So now this is the 3D pumpkin that I did get from Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to glue those back in the spots that they were in previously. Then the larger pumpkin, then again, we're going to do the same thing with the large blue ovals. So that's the first one, the second one, and then here's the smallest one. So now we're going to add a little bit of accent to those. So you just want to water down some paint that coordinates with your pumpkins. You don't have to do this part. It's just optional. But I like to add some little lines and dots. And like I said, I just water down paint and I use different colors that would coordinate so like the scrapbook paper had a lot of different colors with the lines. So I used a little bit of brown. I used some green. I used some soft white, almost like a creamy beige color and just did all the way around um, both sides of these. I even put some little dots all the way around it just to outline those ovals. And it just helps add a little bit of extra detail to these pumpkins. So once those were dry, it was time to start putting these together. So now taking that large wood strip or your dowel rod or your paint um, stirrer sticks, you want to start putting this together. So I put the fix all adhesive on the back and I spread that out. And then that's going to be more of a permanent hold. But then what I did is I put some hot glue on either side of that glue. And that's going to help to, you know, get it to stick right away. So you want to line up that bottom edge of the milk can with the strip of wood and then glue that on and then just kind of move around your pumpkin, decide where you want it to be. I was a little disappointed. I covered up a lot of the top of the milk can because it was so cute, but it still looks really nice the way it is. And then once you have all three pumpkins glued in, you know, ascending order from smallest, from largest to smallest, then you want to go ahead and start making your decorations to go in between each one of these pumpkins. So I took some raffia, just wrap it around your hand, and then you want to gather the center, wrap some more raffia around the center, and then hot glue that. Then just trim up some of the little scraggly pieces with your scissors, and then go ahead and spread out that bow just to make it a little bit more fluffy. So then I put some greenery down first, and then I glued the bow on top and then taking pieces of that bamboo wreath, I just glued those underneath of the bow, some facing down, some going up um, towards the blue pumpkin on either side. And then I glued another little uh, leaf down to the center there. So you just kind of want to play with it and decide where you want your flowers, what colors and things like that. So then I took a twine bow and I actually made two of those. I glued one to the top and one to the bottom which I didn't do it yet because I hadn't decided on that yet. Then I just glued a little bit of these white flowers underneath of there. And then I went ahead and added that second twine bow and a sunflower to the center. So as you can see, I've got some of those bamboo wreath pieces, the twine, the raffia, some flowers, a little bit of greenery, and then a sunflower. So that is for the large blue pumpkin. So now I'm going to use two different colors of raffia, some of these blue and green picks from Dollar Tree, as well as a few of these um, little berries and leaves. And I'm going to glue those to the next part. So you just want to put some hot glue down on e and then glue those picks facing each direction so that they stick out to the sides. Now, as you go up the pumpkin, you want to kind of pull your um, flowers and things in so it you know, get smaller as you go up. You don't want it to be the same amount of flour sticking all the way out as you have at the bottom with the large pumpkin because then it doesn't really um, 
looks cohesive. So it's just better if you kind of shrink those down a little bit as you go. So as you work with it, like I said, you just want to kind of shrink them down, maybe pull them more in towards the center so that they're a little bit shorter and look more like they're supposed to be there. So then I decorated those on either side just with some leaves, flowers, twine, and the sunflower again. And then for the top one here, I went ahead and did the same design as I did for the first one um, with the same coloring. And then I just did a little tiny bow, raffia, some um, leaves, and a little bit of white flowers at the top. And then, so that's the top. Here is the second pumpkin here. And then it's got the green and the blue flowers underneath of that one. And then for the large blue pumpkin here, it has the same flower designs and stuff that I did at the top, just with those bamboo pieces. So it was just a little bit different. And then, of course, there's the milk can. Then you can spray this whole thing with some spray sealer. You can just cover it all in Mod Podge. It's really up to you. But I am so happy with how this turned out. I absolutely love this project so very much. Here's what the back looks like with it all painted black and then that wood slat on the back there thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this don't forget to subscribe like and share if you enjoyed this video and you could share it i'd really appreciate that and here are some other videos from our channel you might also enjoy i hope you all have a great day